welcome back. If you skipped the first podcast and this is your first time listening, welcome. Now, you can go back to listen to part one, People and Animals, first if you want to, but you don't need to. You can keep listening if you want. Thanks for taking the time for listening today. This is the second of three podcasts of a project called You, Me, The World and Poplar. And in case you've forgotten, or in case this is your first time listening, my name is Nick and I'm from Take Stock Exchange. I'm going to tell you three stories about when we met three groups of people in Poplar remotely. I hope you're comfortable. Here we go. Oh, oh, before we get going, I've got a question. Feel free to answer this question out loud. Maybe you're sitting with someone, you want to have a chat with them about it, or just answer it in your head. Where do you feel most at home and why? Part two, safe and sound. Okay, the setup for this workshop is a little confusing, but I'll do my best to explain it. Bear with me, we'll get there together. Okay, so the laptop is in the corner of a room in a community centre in Poplar, okay? And we are on the Zoom call on this laptop, okay? And we are looking at this community centre from the laptop and we can see chairs and they're spread out about a metre apart. The room is slowly filled by a group of Bengali men and we, the Zoom call, is being projected onto a big wall in the studio in this community centre. As each of the people walk in, they look up at the projection, they say hello, and they smile and wave, and we wave back at them. Got it? Okay. It's 6.30pm on Monday the 12th of October. The woman from the community centre who sets up the call, she enters the room and she runs through some housekeeping. You know, wear masks outside the room, keep the chairs where they are, keep social distancing. When she leaves, nearly all the seats are filled. So there's maybe about 10 people in the room. A few of the men, as they walk in, put T-shirts on over whatever they're wearing. And the T-shirts have a word written across it. We ask, what does that word mean? It means our house. Not just that, it's a feeling of home that you can be yourself. When we're here, it can be your home. What brings you here today? We were meeting every day in lockdown, Facebook Live, socialising, meeting, Skype every day. The men express a sense of relief about them all being able to be in the same room with each other again. I came from Birmingham to be here today. He came from Ilford. I'm from Norwich. It's not only London, it's all over the UK. We're the first LGBT Bangladeshi group in the UK. We come here so we can share how to make friends, how to make life, how we can protect ourselves. Some people don't have English, so it's an easy way to connect. There's a bit of silence. And then the organiser sits in the middle of the front row. He has his arms out, his hands spread. And he says, inside here we are feeling comfortable. But outside this is hard. Our community, it's like in Bangladesh. They don't believe LGBT people are from God. Here it's a big problem in the UK and Tower Hamlets. There's a lot of Bengali communities here. A man sitting at the side of the room turns his head to look at us directly at the laptop. He says, you feel like they're going to kill you. Crazy people. We can't be open outside. This is 2020. People need to grow up. Not only Bangladeshi people, but English people who don't like LGBT people. There are murmurs in agreement around the room. Each of the men tell a similar story of homophobia, discrimination, that this is the only place they can feel completely safe to be who they are. They express frustrations at the outside world and a sense of belonging in this room. Some of them sit casually, some stand to speak. Others speak in Bengali through the organiser, who says motioning to the rest of the group they're like my children we say 
We're going to make a statement now, and I'd like you to vote based on how much you agree with it. If you agree, put your thumbs up. Disagree, thumbs down, or in the middle, just wobble your hand. The statement is, Poplar is a great place to be. There's a long silence. Why did you ask this? Do you mean in general or for LGBT people? We say interpret the question as you wish. There's another silence. The organiser, he puts his thumb up and then the other men look at him and then look at one another and then one by one they either put their thumbs up or they wobble their hands. One man who at this point hasn't spoken explains the reason for wobbling his hands. In general, it's good for me, for facilities. If we're talking about LGBT, I'm going to go in the middle. From my own experience, I can't be open here. If I go for shopping, I can't be open as a gay person. Now, the organiser is searching on his phone and he finds what he's looking for. He comes close to the laptop and he shows us a photo of him at last year's Pride Parade, surrounded by other men from the LGBT Bengali community, some who are also in this room. He smiles as he shows this photo to us. That's me, a drag queen. A British celebrity photographer took the picture. It was on a poster in Piccadilly Garden. I'm hosting one of the main LGBT TV shows. I do performances in the UK. I did Parliament, South Bank, everywhere I did my performance. But sometimes, behind me, they are whispering. Ooh, he's gay. When I hear this, I'm feeling bad. Behind you, someone is talking rubbish. What can you do? We put the final statement to the group. Agree, disagree, or in the middle, the future will be better than the present. Everyone's thumbs are up straight away. We ask, can you say why? We are hoping. Hoping we can be open. Ourself, we are hoping. People can see us as normal people. We hope. It's good deaf awareness, putting another light on. It's good in the deaf world to be well lit. It's 6.30pm on Wednesday the 7th of October. We're on another Zoom call with two deaf artists from Poplar and a British Sign Language interpreter. Both artists are at home. One is sitting against a plain white wall, the other has her kitchen in the background. It's dark outside. One of the women just switched on another light. She uses English, whilst the other uses BSL to communicate with us through the interpreter. I'm a Londoner, and I lived abroad for five years, says the woman who speaks English. During the last two or three years, I was really homesick. I know it's quite grotty and polluted and stuff, but I was homesick for all of it. Really happy to be home. I like the people in the market. The woman who uses BSL, she thinks... And then she starts signing. The interpreter follows and she speaks her words. By the flat where I live, there's a lot of traffic. The building does feel safe, but I've had issues, leaks, damage. The constant repair has affected my experience. The area has events, films, cinemas, sometimes small festivals. I would say I get bored, but I keep busy doing creative work. I don't see many deaf people around. I would say that. The other woman nods in agreement. I have leaks too. I got a new kitchen. Thought we'd fixed it. It started again. That's not Poplar specific. I grew up in Harlesden, but we sold that house because there were shootings and tape at the end of the road. In Poplar, it's different. I haven't seen any shootings. Oh, and in this area, they stopped the 2011 riots coming here, spreading here. It feels quite peaceful. There's a lot of politics about Harker and the redevelopment in the market. There were some people protesting it and others were saying, we want the change. They're going to build a cinema in that market space. 
I was watching, frowning because I was trying to read the lips of the people with the loud hailers. Then somebody suddenly passed me the megaphone. I said, I want cheap fruit and vegetables. People were filming me on their phones. I was accidentally supporting the campaign against the redevelopment of the market. But when I thought about it, I would like a cinema in the market. I want there to be different things. I am profoundly deaf, so I avoided talking to people for a long time in a chatty way, avoiding having casual conversations. So I didn't really know my neighbours. But I've got a cochlear implant now, so that lets me hear really well. The pace of this conversation is sometimes quick, with the two women interjecting into one another's speech to agree or add something new, and sometimes it's slow, filled with pauses, and people think, or as we wait for the interpreter to catch up. At times it feels impassioned and loud, at other times it feels meditative and quiet. We ask the question, do you feel connected to other people in Poplar? The woman who uses BSL starts signing her response. So where I live, I have three neighbours and they are nice. We don't have a deep connection, just hello. The other people are nice as well. When we go for a walk sometimes, I see people I know who have kids that go to my daughter's primary school. My friends who are deaf are scattered all around. When I see you, that's lovely. She points at the other woman and they smile at each other. The woman who uses English takes a breath. It's capitalism, isn't it? Makes us quite isolated. She pauses again. I'm a member of the Labour Party. Any kind of activism helps you feel connected. I've been living here for six or seven years, I think, in the Poplar area. This is a very hearing community. News is transmitted orally. I only receive it through community magazines. And there's so many buildings going up in the area. It always feels like we're in America. The concept of design, the open plan living, access for deaf people. There is a question mark on that, I would say. We ask our final question. What is the one thing you're going to take away from this conversation? For me, it's our different experiences of homesickness. It's still a novelty for me, being back in Poplar. So it's almost like the homesickness hasn't left me. I feel like grabbing the ground sometimes. A voice note appears. Hello, it begins. This is the answer to your first question. Is Poplar a great place to be? Yes, we think it really is. It's 10am on Tuesday the 13th of October. Now, (laughs) at this point, we are running our first ever workshop conducted over WhatsApp. It's with a group of women in Poplar. And we're using WhatsApp because in a COVID world, this is how these women have been communicating with one another. This is a women's group whose name is a Bengali word which can be translated as the inner apartments of a house where the women live. And we have just posted our first question to the group. It's, is Poplar a great place to be? Yes, We think it really is, because recently we've had a huge amount of time stuck indoors and the open air spaces, especially our local parks, have been used by our women. And the most important thing we do is meet up, we chat, we have a discussion about anything that's getting us down. A text message from someone else appears. It's okay, it could be better. Which is followed up by... Sorry, I'm in the middle of supporting my friends to dealing with the council tax. Give a few mins and I'll be back to you. So sorry. Then a long typed message from a third woman appears, which says, 
Poplar is a great place if you have community base or family to help support you. If you're new to the area, it can be very isolating and anxiety inducing. It's become quite transient and fast paced. Too many people on short stay work contracts. It's becoming a victim of gentrification and big business. If you've lived in Poplar for a while, you feel like you've been overlooked, not considered or just plain ignored by the ruling council. And then, out of nowhere, (laughs) all of our phones start ringing. We look and we can see that one of the women is video calling everyone else in the group and one by one, everyone answers their phone. Each of us can see the other's faces squeezed into little boxes on the screens of our phones. We see a black woman, a woman of East Asian heritage and a woman wearing a headscarf. Everyone looks at each other and laughs and giggles as if we're experiencing some kind of collective relief. When we discover that the woman who called everyone didn't actually mean to, she was just trying to work out how to send a video to the group, there's more laughter. We decide to return to the conversation on WhatsApp, and after the call, the group feels like a very different place. When we post our second question, do you feel connected to people in Poplar? The women rapidly post 10 long messages in 4 minutes, a combination of texts and voice notes, each with a slightly different perspective on things. One text says, As I grow older, I'm losing more of our shared memories and togetherness we felt growing up. The whole area has fragmented into little cliques, almost ghettoized, you might say. Also, the pressure of providing for yourself or your family or more hours of work but less funds adds to the pressure of family life. There is less time to stop, take a breath and relax. One of the voice notes says, I find that people are not that friendly, but if you make a stand and talk to people, they will talk back to you. So I find that I don't have a problem and I'm really lucky. In my building, people talk to one another, so we are connected. Another voice note says, I've lived in Poplar since I was a kid. There's lots of traditional families going back decades, lots of people moving out, so connection isn't there. We are trying with new people, but some people don't want to connect. We're having to make new friends and make connections with people all over again. We're having to make new communities for ourselves, so we're starting to feel connected again because of the efforts we are making. We post another question. Will the future be better than the present? There's a brief pause after we post it, and then, once again, a flurry of messages appears. A text message. Currently, the future looks very bleak and uncertain due to covid It is going to affect us all, in every way. Job cuts and financial problems are going to add problems for everyone. Another text. Not the way things are going. Everything community orientated is going online, but the people who need it can't afford to use it. Online services have gone too far and alienated and isolated the working poor. I think we need to step back, have more face-to-face interaction. People feel heard when they see real people another text on a positive note we can see a change in people's attitudes and determination to make a change for the better this is hugely encouraging for us as it gives us the motivation we need to carry on with our work we are working very hard to get our community hub together so people have somewhere to go we post our final question as it's now the end of our conversation We post, what are your thoughts? How are you feeling? And there's a text message. It's very nice to be asked. We see a lot of the developers, a lot of the people who make the decisions leave out the residents. They're not interested in hearing what we have to say. We are grateful and glad to be given the chance to voice our feelings. Another text. Hopeful. Knowing that there are others who are as concerned as we are about Poplar is quite refreshing. I hope that we can make a change or at least a small dent in the gentrification of Poplar. A few emojis are posted. 
waves, claps, and finally, a hug. Thank you very much for listening to part two, Safe and Sound. Now, if you want, you can go back and listen to part one, People and Animals, and part three, Love and Livability, is coming up. Thanks again. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. You, Me, The World and Poplar was a project delivered by Take Stock Exchange and Poplar Union. You can join the conversation by going to takestockexchange.co.uk where you can leave your comments, thoughts and feedback or simply answer this question. What will you take away from this episode? I look forward to seeing what you have to say. We'd like to thank all of the participants and groups that took part in this project. We usually meet in person, but at this difficult time, we made it happen remotely. Funding for this project came from Arts Council England, Poplar Harker and Poplar Union. The project was conceived and delivered by Take Stock Exchange, Nick Kassenbaum, Eleanor Clack, Ollie Hawes and Anna Smith. Music and sound was by Anna Lowenstein and the audio was mixed by Naomi Jackson. We've got some big thank yous to Isabel Cotino, Moena Johnson, Beth Watton, Babu Batasheji, John Geeson, Ted Maxwell, Mary Osborne, Cheryl Gallagher, Mandy Phil and Bertie Casson, Poplar Harker and Poplar Union. And again, we'd like to thank the participants of the workshops, the organisers of each group we worked with and the community of Poplar. You can find out more about our work at takestockexchange.co.uk or feel free to get in touch at hello at takestockexchange.co.uk. Thank you very much for listening.